What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop. So with Pokemon Sword and Shield revealing many brand new Galar Pokemon recently, I have really been getting into the inner workings of Pokemon designs lately. And I've gotta say, Pokemon designs are one of my favorite part of the franchise. So much goes into every single Pokemon design, whether it be a small common bug type or a super important legendary, they all have something that makes them unique and they all have a lot of beautiful inspiration that goes into them and and it really truly deserves to be appreciated. And that is why in today's video, I'm going to be going over the top 10 best designed Pokemon. Now, when it comes to Pokemon designs, they're obviously very subjective, and what I enjoy in a design might be different from yours, so obviously this is going to be an opinion piece. And there might be some Pokemon on here that you might not necessarily expect for this type of video, and it's going to reflect what I ultimately appreciate in Pokemon designs individually. We'll get into that more though as we go throughout the video, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Coming in at number 10 is a bit of a cop-out, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, and that would be Pikachu. Now, Pikachu is here simply because not only is it the mascot of the franchise, but Pikachu's design is a huge factor in why Pokemon is as popular as it is. The reason why Pikachu is so successful as a mascot, and by extension why Pokemon grew to be so successful as a franchise, is because Pikachu is a character who can appeal to both males and females equally. For the males and the young boys, it's cool and electrified and it's strong, but then for the girls, it's cute and cuddly and adorable, and it's got both of those traits that don't really step on each other's toes. So for those reasons, I had to at least include him somewhere on the list, so he gets the number 10 spot. Coming in at number 9 is one of those Pokemon that I mentioned you might not expect to see on a list like this, and that would be Krikatot and Krikatoon. Now, Krikatot and Krikatoon, in my opinion, are some of the most underrated Pokemon of all time, because even amongst the starting bugs, they don't really get a lot of love, but there is so much to enjoy about their designs. In case you couldn't tell because it is kind of subtle, Krikatot and Krikatoon are basically music bugs. You've got Krikatot, who is not only some kind of cricket or beetle, but is also musically inspired having antennas that resemble a phonograph or another similar early music playing device, and that it also has a jacket that is reminiscent of a music conductor. And then upon evolving into Krikatoon, it straight up gets the body of a lute or guitar-like instrument. Now, it's not just the music inspiration that I believe makes Krikatot and Krikatoon so great, it's the creativity to combine this with a rather simple bug-like creature and do it in a way that's completely natural looking and seamless. That's the biggest thing that I appreciate that I think you're going to find throughout the video when it comes to Pokemon designs. When they get creative with their inspirations and seamlessly and naturally blend two things together that really have no business being together whatsoever and pull it off in such a natural looking way. That is what I love the most about Pokemon designs, and Krikatot and Krikatoon are a great example of that. Moving into number 8, we have another pick that you probably wouldn't suspect, and it's actually another bug type as well, and that would be Volbeat and Illumise. Now these Pokemon often get overlooked just because they're in the middle of the Hoenn Dex, they don't evolve, and they're not very strong in battle. So ultimately, a lot of people end up thinking that they're just kind of throwaway Pokemon when that is not the case at all. Not only are these Pokemon based on Fireflies, they're also based on the Greaser and Flapper Girl fashion styles of the 1950s and 20s respectively, and just like Krikatot and Krikatoon, it can be easy to miss these characteristics in their design at first glance, but if you take a second to look at it, these design aspects will start to pop out, and that's when you can truly appreciate the beauty of these Pokemon. And just the simple concept of fireflies combined with these different fashion styles is an extremely creative premise that is pulled off so well with Volby and Illumise, and it makes me appreciate the crap out of them way much more than I did maybe a few years ago, and hopefully this, if you didn't know already, will help you to appreciate them too.
Coming up at number seven on the list is Braviary, and Braviary is here for a lot of different reasons. First off, it is a very strong and majestic looking bird Pokemon that really exemplifies the kind of bird Pokemon any Pokemon trainer would want to have on their team, but also it is the perfect representation of the Unova region. The Unova region, being based on the New York City area in the United States, is the first Pokemon region based in an area of the world outside of Japan, and Braviary is essentially the mascot for Unova, being the United States Pokemon. First off, it is based on a bald eagle, which is the mascot of the United States. It has red, white, and blue in its color scheme, which are the colors of the American flag, and it sports a Native American headdress, which was worn by Americans who were native to this country. So Braviary gets a lot of points for combining all of those things into one design, but the thing that makes it truly exceptional is the way that it combines those elements. It doesn't push one element or another too hard, and it doesn't look too over the top as an American Pokemon could be very easily made out to be. Every single one of its elements is subtle but still present enough to be appreciated, and so it's just a perfect combination and representation of some of America's most iconic and distinctive characters. Characteristics. Moving up the list to number 6 is Donphan, and when it comes to this philosophy of unlikely things coming together perfectly in a Pokemon design, Donphan is a great representative for that idea. Donphan is the extremely unlikely combination of an elephant and a tire, and even though those two things seem like they have no business being together whatsoever, they come together in this design perfectly. From making Donphan look like its own unique creature, to giving Donphan a reason as to why it uses the move Rollout as an elephant Pokemon, to the way that it has the tire treads going up its back and down its trunk, it all just comes together so seamlessly in Donphan's design, and as I said before, these types of designs just blow my mind, they fascinate me with their creativity, and so Donphan being a good and one of the earliest representations of these kinds of designs easily gets the number six spot. Right in the middle of the list at number 5 is actually another Generation 2 Pokemon with this kind of design philosophy, and that would be Remoraid. Now, I would argue that Remoraid hides its design origins possibly even better than Donphan does, because it's based on a fish, obviously, and a handgun, which once again have no business being together, but they come together in Remoraid's design perfectly. In fact, they come together so perfectly that almost the entire shape of a handgun is represented in Remoraid's design. You have everything from the handle of the gun, to the hammer used to cock the gun back, to the overall shape of a revolver more specifically in the back of Remoraid's body, even down to the rivets of the revolver itself represented by the stripes on Remoraid's side. You even have a sight that is represented by Remoraid's head fin, and its head itself is even in the shape of a bullet. So every single part of Remoraid's design literally represents a gun, but if you were to look at it at first glance, that is not something that you would pick up on at all. And that beautiful blend of completely unrelated things is why Remoraid gets the number 5 spot as one of the best designed Pokemon ever. Now we are on to the number 4 spot, and at the number 4 spot we have Go-Goat. Now Go-Goat, just like its predecessors at number 5 and number 6, has a similar design philosophy in combining different things that have no business being together, and this time around it's a ram combined with a motorcycle. Once again, at first glance, you would not see anything but a simple ram-like Pokemon when looking at Go-Goat, but if you take a closer look, you'll notice that Go-Goat's horns are meant to represent the handlebars on a motorcycle, and even the grass on its back is in the shape of a motorcycle seat. This is all put into place because Go-Goat is essentially the Pokemon who introduced the concept of riding Pokemon back when this feature was first introduced in Pokemon X and Y, but even still the creativity of combining once again two unrelated things and then pulling it off so naturally in a design like this where you don't even really notice it at first glance is just a testament to the creativity that the folks over at Game Freak have. I obviously appreciate the crap out of it, and Go-Goat is one of my favorite designs designs in this style.
Now we get into the top three, and at the number three spot, we have none other than Lucario. Now, Lucario isn't like some of the previous picks on the list because he doesn't really combine things that have no business being with each other, quote unquote. He is here simply because of the depth of his design overall, and also straight up because he just looks insanely cool. First, what I mean by the term insanely cool is that Lucario's design is what afforded him the opportunity to become as extremely popular as he now is. Obviously, Lucario in the present day is right up there with Pikachu, Eevee, and Charizard, for instance, as being some of the most popular Pokemon of all time, and that is because of how cool and interesting Lucario looks. However, unlike a Pokemon like Charizard, for instance, Lucario doesn't just look cool for cool's sake. As I said, it also has an extremely deep and intricate design as well. Everything from being based on the iconic God of the Dead Anubis, to early Egyptian boxing, to mythical metals, and even devices that are said to sense spiritual energies and auras, Lucario has an extremely deep design that I can't even go into full detail here, but it pulls it off in a way that also just looks extremely cool on the surface. And when you've got all of those things in one design, that's when you know you've got a good Pokemon, so Lucario easily earns the number three spot. Up next in the runner-up spot at number two is Empoleon. Now, I have talked in recent weeks about my love for Empoleon, but I am gonna go in depth about why I love its design specifically. Once again, much like some of the other picks on this list, Empoleon combines two things that have no business being together, an Emperor Penguin and Napoleon Bonaparte. Yes, the actual physical living human being, Napoleon Bonaparte. This makes Empoleon a literal emperor penguin, which is already super ingenious and creative on its own, but the thing that makes this even more interesting is that it also integrates this inspiration into its name, as it gets its name from emperor as an emperor penguin and Napoleon, and it also gets its Japanese name, Emperte, from emperor and Bonaparte, which is of course Napoleon's last name. Empoleon even goes so far as to mimic the height, and more specifically the weight, of Napoleon Bonaparte himself. And when it comes from that creative of an inspiration as well, there is just no doubt that Empoleon has one of the greatest Pokemon designs ever. And at the number one spot, the Pokemon that I believe has the greatest design of all time, at least at this point in time, is Xerneas. The reason why I say Xerneas is because Xerneas' design is just so inspired and well thought out from every single angle imaginable. First off, Xerneas, along with its counterpart Eveltal, have a famous story of being designed by Ken Sugimori, but during the design of these Pokemon, he experienced artist block, and so he handed the design of these Pokemon over to Yasuke Omura. From there, Omura furthered the designs, and then Sugimori came back to finish the designs along with Omura's help. This was actually the first time in the series when a legendary Pokemon was designed, or at least partially designed, by someone other than Sugimori, and the whole story just epitomizes how much thought and care and effort went into these two Pokemon. Additionally, Xerneas just has so much going for it from an inspirational standpoint. First off, it's meant to sort of resemble the letter X, as it is the mascot of Pokemon X, but then it also has so many mythological inspirations, from the more well-known roots in Norse mythology, to some inspiration from Celtic mythology, and even some inspiration from Hinduism as well. As much as I would love to, I won't really be able to go into full detail on Xerneas' origins here, so I recommend checking out this video by Loxton, where he does a really good job of explaining it all. If you take a look at Xerneas for what it's worth from a strictly visual perspective, it's also just about as majestic and beautiful Pokemon as you are ever going to get. I honestly don't feel like I can emphasize enough how truly beautiful this Pokemon is, and when you combine that with its backstory of how much thought, care, and effort was truly put into it, combined with its plethora of inspirations that once again blend together seamlessly to create this beautiful Pokemon, it in my estimation has to definitely be the best designed Pokemon we have seen so far, and by association its counterpart Eveltal definitely gets some credit too, since it has much of the same story. 
And there we have it everybody, those are the top 10 best designed Pokemon in my own opinion. As always, be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it as well, subscribe for more Pokemon content every week, and if you'd like to support the channel further, check me out on Spotify and listen to my Pokemon remixes there because it directly supports producing videos here. With that being said though, I'll be back on Saturday for another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can know when it goes live, and with all that being said, I love you guys very much, and I will smell you guys later.